Hello, and welcome back to the show where we discuss how badly I need a haircut. Just kidding. Uh, you're watching Foundry Development Videos, and today we're going to be covering a lot of advanced topics in our Macros 102 video. Uh, we're going to cover the role class, how to output messages to chat, how to show dialogue so uh, you can get input from players. Um, there's going to be a lot. This is going to be very dense content. Uh, so let's get started. The first macro we're going to cover is how to roll for multiple actors at the same time. Uh, so for example, I have this mage, it has a fight skill, uh, and then I have this thug who also has a fight skill. So if I select both of them, how can I roll for them at the same time and output that to chat? Um, so to do that, let's get started. First of all, go ahead and make these characters and give them a fight skill. You don't need to give them a name or image or anything. I'm just doing that for demonstration purposes. But make sure they have a skill called fight. Uh, make sure it has some value. Um, you can also use, if you're using a different system and you can't give them arbitrary skill names, that's totally fine. If you remember our Macros 101 video, I showed you how to find those values in any given system. So even though I'm using simple world building system, the same kind of approach is going to be what you use for your system. So let's switch over to our code. Uh, here I've created our little outline um, that we always start with called the main function and then define the main function. Um, let's outline the macro. First, we're gonna be fetching all the selected targets. Uh, I shouldn't use the word targets. Uh, fetching all the selected actors. Uh, then we're gonna be rolling for each actor and then outputting, oh my God, uh, outputting each role to chat. So that's the three-step process that we're gonna be tackling for this short macro. Okay, so let's tackle the first thing. Um, and we covered a, this a little bit in our last video, so this shouldn't be completely out of the blue, but we can say actors equals canvas.tokens.controlled. Um, and actually, we're gonna learn a new function here. So if you remember, uh, if we actually just, uh, if we call this tokens instead of actors, and we console log this, uh, this should give us a list of all selected tokens. So let's copy this. Let's go to Foundry. Let's edit this. Uh, make sure this is a script macro, save macro. And if I select two tokens and I hit this macro, you'll notice I got a list of two uh, tokens here. If we go back, we're going to learn a new function. The function is called map. Uh, and what map does is it takes each of the elements uh, inside the array and we'll say, um, uh, you can call it whatever. Normally people use EL, you'll see EL used a lot. EL stands for element. Uh, it's just uh, array agnostic. Um, specifically for this array, we can say token. And for each token, we're going to return, oh, uh, and I need to do this. Uh, we're using an arrow function. Arrow function means take some, uh, this is going to, for each token, do some um, code. Uh, the code that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be returning token.actor, and so what we'll actually end up with is a list of the actors for the token. So if we do this, uh, and then we copy this, boom, and we execute, you'll notice that I got, instead of two tokens, I got two actors this time. And that's again because for each token, I said return the token.actor value. This would be the same as if I had written um, a for loop uh, that went over each of these tokens. Uh, it's just a quicker way to write that. It's called map. Okay, now for the next thing, let's start with rolling um, for each of these actors. So let's actor of actors. Um, let's get their fight skill first because we're going to be adding that as a modifier onto the roll. Um, fight skill uh, equals actor.data.data.attributes.fight.value. And again, the reason I know what this uh, URL, not really URL, uh, this data path is, is because I can look it up on these actors. So if we go here and we click on one of these actors, uh, data dot data dot attributes dot fight dot value. So I'm trying to get this one. Um, and you can find the same way for whatever system you're using. Okay, so we got the fight skill. Um, then if the if there is no fight skill, uh, actually this is going to throw an error first. Um, I'm going to I'm going to teach you another new thing. 
if we put this question mark here, so let's let's not put this question mark here, and let's just do console.log fight skill. Right, so if we do this, and we execute this, um, I gotta clear this. So if I execute this, it's going to print uh, the fight skill value of each one, which is one and two, it'll do all of these, fantastic. What if I had another actor? Let's create a new actor. This actor doesn't have any attributes. If we go under attributes, it doesn't have any attributes. So if I call the function on this, you'll notice I get an error. Cannot read property value of undefined. This is because when it's trying to look for this, it doesn't have the fight attribute. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a question mark here. The question mark says uh, only if it exists. If it doesn't exist, then it's going to return this as undefined. And so this won't, instead of an error, it'll just give us an undefined. So if we do this, you'll notice it says undefined. So if we do um, if fight skill equals undefined, um, continue. And what we're going to do here is what this means is if fight skill is undefined, do not roll for this actor. If instead I wanted to set it to some default value, I could do fight skill equals zero. So there are two things I want to teach you here. One, the undefined thing, and the second is continue. Continue basically says, this is a JavaScript function, uh, JavaScript piece. It says, go to the next iteration of this loop. So it's in a loop right now, this for loop. Go to the next iteration of it. It's ignore the rest of the code that's in this loop. Um, and so we still want it to roll for all actors. So if we select like 10 actors, some of them have the fight skill and some of them don't, we, all, we want it to roll for the ones that do have the fight skill. We don't know which ones do or which ones don't. I don't want to spend time looking into it. So I just want it to roll for everyone that has the fight skill. Okay. Now we're ready to learn how to do a roll. So let's call it let roll equals, oh, uh, I'm going to scroll a little bit further down so you guys can see this a little bit better. A new role, uh, make sure it's capital R. Uh, it might try to do a lowercase r for you, make sure it's capital R. Um, and then we're going to give it the formula that we want it to roll. So we want it to roll uh, 2d20, uh, keep lowest, uh, This for whatever reason this actor is rolling with disadvantage, uh, plus at actor attack, or we can call it actor fight, it doesn't really matter. Whatever we call it here, we're actually going to pass in the value like so. So we're going to call this fight, uh, and then we're going to give it the fight skill. So this gives it data to fill in into the string. So we're doing the string, and then the substitution for any variables you define in the string with the at sign, uh, you do using this kind of object. So if you wanted to add more stuff to it, if you wanted to add uh, weapon attack, uh, like so, you could go ahead and do weapon attack equals zero or go find it from somewhere as well. So it's uh, it's just the same way that you do everything else. Cool. So let's keep it here. Uh, now, this constructs a rolled object, but to actually roll the dice, we need to do this. Uh, we need to add a little dot roll function after it. So this will roll the dice. After we have done that, uh, let's console.log the roll just to see what it looks like. If we click this, mm. oh, this this actor didn't have the fight skill, so nothing happened. I'm gonna go ahead and clear this. You guys can see this a little bit better. Uh, select all of these, uh, and so you'll notice it rolled twice because uh, two actors were selected. But if I had all three selected, it would still roll twice. Um, because this actor doesn't have the fight skill as we mentioned before. On this role, this role object is going to have a couple of things. This is the formula that it used. You'll notice the formula is different on this one and this one. And the reason being is one of their fight skill is one, the other one's fight skill is two. And it has a bunch of other information in there. The only thing that we care about is this result and total. So I actually only care about the total. I only want to know what the total was. And so we're going to go ahead and if we go here, uh, console.log roll. If we do roll to message, like so, and we copy this, we put this in our macro, and we roll this, and we go to chat, it'll actually print out the rolls for each of them. 
Um, this one, uh, one of them rolled a 10, one of them rolled an 8. Well, this is well and good, but if I'm rolling for a group of actors, this doesn't help me if the, uh, the person that, sa that it says is rolling says Game Master. I would ideally like this to say the name of the token that actually rolled the die, so I can tell them apart. Um, so we can do that by going back to our back row, and then this roll message uh, function call, we're going to create curly brackets, and we're going to give it the speaker uh, that is actually saying these things. And the alias for the speaker is going to be the actor.data.name. I, I think it's actor.data.name. It might be actor.name. We'll find out in just a minute. Some live testing. And there we go. It was actor.data.name. And this time it'll say the thug rolled an 11 and the mage one rolled a 4. And that's how we use the role class and we output the chat uh, and we deal with multiple selected tokens. Okay, so for the next macro, it's going to be very dense. Uh, we're going to make a macro that, when you select an actor, will give you a little pop-up with all of the actor's weapons, will let you choose one of those weapons, and then it will roll a die for uh, the attack of that weapon, compare that die to the armor of your target. If that uh, die is greater than the, than the armor of your target, it will give you a little button that says roll damage, and then you can roll damage from chat just like that. We'll output all of this to chat. Uh, so let's get started. So first, we're going to check the selected targets. We only want the macro to allow uh, people to attack with just one target at a time, or one actor at a time. So we're going to do let selected equals canvas.tokens.controlled. Um, if the selected dot length, oh my god, I can't spell, uh, equals equals zero, or selected dot length greater than one, uh, this is going to be really annoying, notifications dot error, please select a single target. And so what is this going to do? So if we copy this into our macro, uh, like so, and we execute it. Because I have no token selected, it's going to ask me to select a target. If I select a target, uh, it's not going to give me an error. So you'll notice I execute the macro, no error. I don't have a target selected, error. Cool. Now let's go back. Uh, let's do the same thing for target. So what is a target? Uh, target is when you click on a token and you click this bullseye icon, uh, and it gets uh, little triangles by it. That means this token is targeted. The way to get targeted tokens is a little bit different. Um, and actually, we're going to go in console first just so I can show you what it looks like. Uh, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So in console, the way to get targeted tokens is actually to use the game object. Game.user.targets. But here we have a problem. If we compare it to what canvas.tokens.controlled uh, gives us, you'll notice that canvas.tokens.controlled gives us an array and game.user.targets gives us a set. To be able to use it in the same way that we want an array, like what we, what we want is an array, so how do we make an array from a set? Well, we can use the array.from function. Game.user.targets, and now we have an array of tokens that are targeted. Fantastic, so let's go ahead and put that in. Let targets equals array.from game dot user dot targets if targets dot length equals zero or targets dot length greater than one same thing we only want this to work if you're targeting one token if you're trying to target multiple tokens this isn't going to work if you're trying to write like an area of effect spell then maybe you do want to target multiple entities but I'm going to leave that as an exercise for the reader uh, and let you figure that out um, so UI dot notifications dot error Please target exactly one token. Cool. Next, we want let current actor equals selected dot actor, and let current target equals select um, targets dot actor. And I think it's actually I think that's correct. I think that's correct. And we can check if it's correct. Let's double check my work. Console.log current actor. Console.log 
current target. So if we take this, we dump this in, then we execute macro, it's going to give me an error, no target selected. Let's try again. Undefined, that's not good. What did I mess up? Uh, oh, these are arrays, so we want to get the first element of the array. Let's go ahead and execute. There we go. We get two different actors. Uh, the first one should be the uh, selected actor. So that should be the mage, and we can double check that it's the mage, mage one, cool. And the other actor should be the thug, we can double check that it's the thug, cool. Let's go ahead and clear everything. Okay, so for the next bit, we're going to see, uh, we're going to get a list of all the weapons that our selected actor has. Uh, to be able to do that, we're going to need to actually give it some weapons. So if you go into the items, I've created a new item called staff. Uh, let me see what values I gave staff. Um, I gave it a type value weapon, label weapon, uh, that's a string, and then I gave it an attack, which is five attack bonus number. Uh, so go ahead, uh, again, if you don't want to give it these values, that's totally fine. Whatever system you're using is going to have the way to denote what item is a weapon and what it doesn't, uh, which item isn't, and you can find that out by exploring the system's data, just like I showed you. Um, but if you're using simple world building, uh, I'm setting a type to weapon and attack to five. And then I'm giving that staff to mage one. Then we go into our code. Uh, we can go ahead and comment these out because we don't need them anymore. Uh, let actor weapons equals current actor dot um, items dot filter. So Normally, um, you see me use the find function. Here we're using the filter function. The difference is find will return the first value that it finds. The filter function is going to return all of the values that it finds that match the expression. This is useful because the actor could have multiple items. It could have a staff, it could have a knife, it could have a lot of things. So we actually want it to return multiple things. Uh, where item um, is going to have data, dot data, dot attributes, uh, dot type dot value is equal going uh, is going to be weapon. So this seems a little complex. Let me zoom out here. Uh, but all we're saying is uh, give me all of the items that this actor has where um, the type is uh, weapon. And if I copy this, well, I'm going to console dot log these just so we can see what shows up. Let's go here. Oops. Uh, edit. Save macro. So right now it only has a staff. So if we do this, it'll give us one item. The item is the staff. And you can notice staff. What if it also has um, the knife item? So if we go to items, I'm going to drag knife in. Uh, and I want to make sure knife has attribute type weapon attack one. So now if I roll this, uh, let me clear this real quick. If I roll this macro, I get two items. It has a staff and a thing. Let's create another item. We'll call this some piece of gear. Maybe we want this to be a health potion. So uh, if we hadn't put that check in and we give uh, the health potion to the selected actor, um, it would have pr printed out all three items. But we're going to put the check in. So, ooh, can I read value of indefined? Let's fix this error. Attributes.type.value equals weapons. Well, what happens when um, it doesn't have a type? So remember that question mark operator I showed you. Uh, let's try this. Let's add the question mark operator. So we'll just get an undefined instead of an error. Uh, and now we get two items. Fantastic. Um, so what did we do here? What, what all happened here? Let's take a step back and look again. We filtered all of the items that it had. So the actor had three items. It had a staff, a knife, and a health potion. It went through each of those items and it checked where the item dot data dot data dot attributes dot type dot value equals weapon. But for the health potion, which did not have a type, it was just a random piece of gear, it didn't have this attribute that we added on. Um, we put a question mark here, so it wouldn't be uh, an error, it would actually just return undefined. And so if we do this, we'll just get undefined. And so it checked if undefined equals weapons, which it does not. And so for the health potion, it was a false and it did not return it. Then when we were console.logged all the actor weapons, it only returned knife 
and staff. So <laughs> let's take these and put it into a pop-up. First, I just want to show you how to make a simple pop-up. So the way you do pop-ups is very, very easy. You do new dialog uh, parentheses dot render true. And so this will create a new dialog. And if uh, the dialog will take in three parameters with the curly brackets, it's going to take in a title, my cool pop-up. It's going to take some content, leave that blank for now. I'll explain what that is in a second. And it's going to have some buttons. Um, and we'll actually leave the buttons uh, empty for now as well. But buttons are going to be an object, content is going to be a string, and the title is also going to be a string. So if we do this, and we copy this in here, and we execute, we'll get a cool little pop-up. This isn't that great. Uh, let's add some stuff to it. So first, um, let's give this pop-up some buttons. If we close this, go back to our code. The first button I want to give it is a roll attack button. So I'm going to give it um, the attribute property, roll attack. It's now going to use the word label. Uh, what do we want to label the button? What should it say? Well, I want it to say roll attack. Uh, and that's it. Uh, and then for the other button, I want it to be a close button. It doesn't matter what you call them. You can call them literally anything. Um, label close. Whatever you put in label is what's going to actually show up. Uh, and we're going to leave it like that, and we're going to copy this. And now if we execute the macro, we get roll attack and close. You notice that two buttons popped up. Awesome. If we do anything, they won't really do anything right now. They don't do anything. That's okay. We're going to show you how to make them actually do stuff. Okay, so if we go back. Um, now let's talk about what's in the content. The content is some HTML. Uh, this HTML is going to be what renders inside the dialog. Now this HTML can be an HTML template, it can be a handlebars template that gets pre-rendered. Um, we're not going to mess around with handlebars or complicated template setups just yet. We'll cover those in a, a future video. For now, I'm going to show you how to do a very, very, very simple template. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to define dialog template. And again, you can call this whatever you want. I just call it dialog template. We're going to use the tick marks um, so we can fill in some data within that template. Uh, we're going to give it some, and this is just going to be HTML. So if you don't know HTML, look up some HTML, but this is going to be some fairly basic HTML. Uh, H1, pick a weapon. H1 is just the heading tag. Um, then let's make a div. Uh, and I'll explain why we're doing this in a second. Um, I would like there to be a select. Uh, I'll, give, I'll make this a bit as well. Because uh, we're going to style this just a bit so it looks a little bit prettier. Uh, and within this, we're going to make a select. Uh, then we're going to do a span. And then another span. Within the first span, we're going to ask for any modifiers that people have. Mod input uh, type number. Um, value zero. And then, there we go. And then the last thing is we want uh, some kind of checkbox uh, to ignore the uh, enemy armor. Maybe we have spell that ignores armor in some way and it does direct attack, whatever it is. Um, so we have ignore armor input type checkbox. Um, and then we want it to be checked by default, just so I can show you some cool stuff with that. Um, and we'll come back and we'll edit this in just a little bit. But for now, this should be enough. Let's call this dialog template. Copy this. If we execute macro, now we'll get this super ugly um, little thing. So there's a select. There's nothing in the select. There's a mod field with a massive input box and then an ignore armor checkbox. Um, okay, so how do we make this pretty, or how do we put this all on one line, etc.? Uh, we're going to actually use Flexbox a little bit. So I'm, again, I'm showing you the very, very basics of HTML and CSS. If you don't understand something that I'm saying, Google it. When I say Flexbox, Flexbox is a type of uh, HTML layout. Um, I'm not the right person to teach you about Flexbox. I barely understand CSS, but this is like the bare minimum that I've picked up. Um, so let's do style. Uh, and so this is an inline style flex. We're saying that everything inside this div 
is going to be of uh, display flex. Uh, by default, flex is going to do it by row. Um, and then we're going to give each of those sections one flex value, one flex unit. And what that's going to do, uh, if I do style flex one, and I put this on each of these things, is it's going to make them equal size. It's going to say um, each of these is the same width, uh, whatever that width is. So if we do this, we copy this, uh, we close out the old one, do a new one. Now it's on the same row, it's still really ugly. Uh, let's see what else we can do about that. Now next, I want this mod input box uh, to be like much smaller, because the mod is going to be one. We don't need this massive box to do that. So let's do this. Uh, and then the, in this input box, we're going to give it a style. And the style tag is going to say width, um, 50 pixels, uh, and then float right. I'm just going to just make it float to the right of the box there. Let's see how this looks. A little bit better. Um, ignore armor. Still kind of ugly. Uh, maybe you want to give it a little bit more room. Um, let's see if I give it flex 2 if that changes anything. Uh, and we'll float it right. And I think that will be that will get us where we want. Flex 2, float right. So if I do this, uh, that did not get us what I wanted. Uh, let's, that's fine. We'll leave it like this for now. Uh, it's a little ugly. Um, if you know how to use HTML CSS, you can make this much nicer. Um, we can also do this. Actually, this might be the best. Uh, display flex and then flex direction column. And what that will do is instead of making them all on the same row, it'll give them each their individual columns. So this might be able to make it a little bit prettier. There we go. Uh, <laughs> a little bit prettier. Um, I'll float the I'll float the checkbox here to the right as well. Like 99% of my work that takes the longest time is just trying to figure out all of this HTML styling stuff. Um, the actual code is easy, but like styling things is really hard. Making things look pretty is hard. There we go. That's not the greatest. Um, maybe if we do this. Let's make this a span. Um, weapon. And then we'll style it here. Float. Right. And we will get rid of this H1. Pick weapon, mod, ignore armor. Oop, something broke. I broke something. Oh, I didn't finish this span. Uh, if you're wondering what all of this code uh, is going to be living, it's on a GitHub repo. It'll be linked in the description. So instead of watching me go through all of these iterations, you can get the best version of this uh, in that repo. So, okay, this is livable. It's not great. It's not great, but it's livable. Um, and again, if you wanted to make this prettier, Learn a little bit of CSS, learn a little bit of HTML, and your life will be better. Right, so after watching me struggle bus with CSS, um, let's go to the next step, which is actually populating the select with all the weapons. Uh, so to do that, let's go back to our code. Um, in our HTML, uh, or in uh, right before HTML, we're going to go through and say let options, uh, I can't spell either, uh, equals an empty string. For let weapon of actor weapons, um, for each weapon we're going to go through and we're going to uh, additively uh, change options. So this plus equal basically says uh, append. So take whatever option task and add this next thing to it. We're going to add a new option. Option goes inside of a select and gives it all of the different options that you might find. Um, the option value is going to be... I forgot to make this a tick mark. Uh, so the option value is going to be weapon.id, um, weapon, and then the 
name of the option is going to be the weapon dot data dot name, and we're actually going to um, also write its attack value. So here we're going to write uh, weapon dot data dot data dot attributes dot attack dot value. So someone can easily see how much that attack actually what damage or what uh, that attack value actually is. Um, okay, and then let's go to the select. And in the select, we're going to do options. So theoretically, if we did everything right uh, and we execute this macro, now we have all of the different weapons that uh, the selected target has. As we mentioned, it has a stack with a staff with an attack of five and a knife with an attack of one. Again, if we roll attack right now, nothing's going to happen. So let's go ahead uh, and for the next part, it can do things. All right. Um, before we can make it do things, one of the things we have to do is we're going to need to put IDs on all of these things. Um, IDs are going to be ways for us to actually get these values later when we are um, interpreting the HTML that comes back to us uh, from the dialog. And so for that, for this select, for this ID, we're going to call this weapon. Uh, for this input, and I can line these up a little bit better. Um, the ID for the mod is going to be modifier, and the ID for the armor is going to be ignore armor. And I'll show you how to use IDs in just a bit. Uh, and this is just me lining them up. You don't actually need to line them up. I just think it's easier to read if, it's, if they're lined up. Um, so IDs are ways to uniquely identify an HTML element. Now. For the roll attack option, we're going to go here and we're going to give this button a new property. We're going to call it callback. And the callback property uh, is going to be asynchronous. Actually, it doesn't need to be asynchronous, but it can be uh, like so. It's going to have some empty parentheses. Uh, not empty. We're going to ask for the HTML value in them. It's going to be an arrow function. And then we're going to make it do things. Uh, oh, we have to put a comma here so it recognizes this. Um, so if we do console.log HTML, actually that won't actually tell us anything. Uh, the HTML is what it comes back to us rendered. So if we change any values in that pop-up and then we hit the button, that HTML of that um, dialog has changed. And so we get the changed HTML. Um, so let's see how we can find things. So let's do console.log HTML.find, just like we used the find function before. Now we use the hash mark, uh, the number shift number three. Uh, this denotes that we're looking for an ID. And we want the ID of weapon. Uh, then we want the first element in that array. It's just because the way the HTML element is returned to us, uh, we actually need to find the first element of that array. Uh, and then we want the value of that. So if we do this, it should return us the ID of the item that was selected. So if we do execute macro, the staff is selected. Let me go ahead and clear this. It should print out the ID of the weapon that's selected. Fantastic. Okay, so using that, uh, instead of this console.log, we'll do weapon ID equals, and we'll get, up, get rid of this last paren here, um, and then modifier equals html.find in the same exact way that we did that, modifier, because the ID up here is modifier. Um, zero dot value. And then we want um, ignore armor, which is a boolean. Uh, boolean. Sorry. Smell dot find. Ignore armor. Um, and so one interesting thing is checkboxes, instead of the value of the checkbox, um, which is not that helpful, the, um, the value isn't a boolean, we can actually use check property. And so this will return true or false based on is it checked or not. Um, and actually the weapon isn't that interesting to us either. So what we want is let weapon equals, um, let's see, what we call the current actor dot items dot find item item dot id equals weapon id so we actually want the full item because we're going to get some other stats from it the weapon id itself isn't that helpful to us uh, now that we have these three values we can actually create a new role so let's go ahead and roll 
uh, the attack. To roll the attack, we're going to use the roll method we learned about in the last section. First, let's create the string for it. Roll string equals, um, and we'll say a roll is a 1d20 plus, um, what modifiers do we want to put it? Let's do the attack value of the weapon. So weapon dot data dot data dot attributes dot attack dot value. And we want to also add in any additional modifiers that someone might have specified. Modifier. Cool. So let roll equals new roll. Ah, stop making it. There we go. Uh, and we want to pass in the little string. Um, since we already did the substitution up here, uh, we don't need to do the substitution like we did in the last section, which was with passing in an object. So this is another way to do that same substitution. Um, it really is up to you how you use it. Um, this to me is a little bit clearer, so I use it this way, but I wanted to show you both ways. Okay, so we're passing in the roll string. What next? Um, oh, I forgot to do dot roll. So this will actually roll the result. And we can console.log the results to make sure that this did everything up to this point correctly. Something is wrong. Ooh, weapon ID is not defined. Let's go and fix that. Uh, oh, I forgot to do this for all of these. Uh, and then I probably did something wrong up here as well. Uh, really quickly, we had an error in our code. It was up here. The value should just be zero, and I accidentally put a quotation there. And now, if we run this code, it should be fixed. There we go. Thank God. Uh, and then it rolls perfectly fine. If we go back, we do want this to console.log, roll.result, or roll.total, actually, uh, just so we know what the total roll is. There we go. So it rolled. It rolled a 21. Okay, now that we have this rolling fine, uh, let's compare the roll to the target's armor. And if it's greater than the target's armor, we're going to print it's a hit. And if it's less than the target's armor, we're going to print it's a miss. So let's target armor equals um, current target dot data dot data dot attributes dot armor dot value. Um, and actually, I'm going to show you a new thing here. Uh, this is going to be called a, a um, condensed if statement. And the way you do that is, uh, first, let's do this. Um, <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure out how to explain this. This is just a very dense way of like writing an if statement. Um, or zero. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see this a little better. So we're saying the target armor. This is the conditional. Uh, current target dot data dot uh, attributes dot armor dot value so if this is defined we're saying if this is defined then the value is uh, the attributes dot armor dot value if it is not defined and I, I can take this in uh, if it is not defined if this returns undefined because remember this question mark means that if it can't find the armor property on uh, current target if the current target isn't wearing any armor it doesn't have any armor attribute this is going to be undefined and if it's undefined uh, then go to the right side of this branch, which is zero. So this is like a very, very condensed way to write uh, an if statement. Equivalently, we could have written this. Equals this. So it's just, it's putting this like one, two, three, four, five lines into one line. That's all we did here. Okay, so we have this target armor. If, um, let's do if roll.total greater than target armor, uh, do something. Uh, let's do let chat content. equals blank, and I'll explain what we're doing here in just a second. Uh, 
chat content, so when we print a chat, it's going to be the same thing that we had with dialogue. It's going to take some kind of HTML. So the chat content we want is chat content equals it's a hit, and chat content equals it's a miss. So if the total is greater than the target armor, it's a hit. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be a miss. And now, for the chat message itself, we're going to do chat message dot create, um, and then we're going to give it some values. First, we're going to give it a speaker, like we did before. The speaker is going to be the current actor dot name, uh, the alias, and then the content is going to be chat content, and that's all. So this will create a chat message, just like that. I'm going to make sure you guys can see it. Let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, just like that. So this is going to create the chat message. If we copy this, uh, and we execute this macro, something broke, unexpected token, sorry about all of this broken, I shouldn't have that there. Uh, sorry about this live debugging, I promise I'm a better coder than this. Just kidding, I'm definitely not, definitely not. Uh, <laughs> so if we go to chat now, it printed it's a hit because we rolled a 24, which is going to be greater than whatever the value of the armor was. And we can check the value of the armor by going here. The armor here is 20, so 24 was greater than the 20. Uh, we're going to be changing this so it actually prints out what we rolled and the target armor that it's going to compare it against. But um, this is an easy way for us to just kind of quickly see if it hits or miss. Uh, boom. Boom. Uh, this time it was a miss. It rolled a 9, which is less than the target armor, which is 20. There we go. Bear with me. We're almost to the end of this video. Uh, let's go back and change up some of this content. Uh, so let's change this chat content to, instead of just saying it's a hit, uh, to give us a little bit more info. Uh, we're going to use the uh, p tags. Uh, p tags make sure that everything is on its own line. We're going to say rolled, roll.total. Um, against target armor, uh, and then we want target armor here. Let's make sure we close our p tag. Uh, it was a hit. Um, and then, well, we'll leave this here for now and then we'll come back to it. Uh, and I want the same thing here except instead of it was a hit, we're going to say it was a miss, uh, like so. Cool. Now, one thing that we want to add, if it's a hit, we actually want to add a button um, so we can actually roll damage directly. So let's add a button, uh, like so. The button will say roll damage. And we're going to give this button an ID of roll damage, like so. So if we copy this, we dump this here, and we execute, we roll. Uh, it was a miss, so it didn't do anything. This time it was a hit, and you notice we got this nice little roll damage button. So if we click the button, the button doesn't do anything right now. We're going to make the button do things. Uh, but that's how we add a button to a chat message. We just use the button property in the HTML. Now, finally, last thing we're going to do is going to make this button actually roll damage. And to be able to do that, we got to make sure that um, for the weapon that we're using, it actually has a damage. Uh, so I added in a new attribute called damage. I gave it a value. So the damage with this weapon is 1d4 plus 2. Call the damage and then make sure it's a string. Um, so when we use the staff, it's going to actually use that damage formula. If we go back to our code, um, after this chat message has been created, now we're going to learn some new stuff. We're going to use hooks. Um, hooks are called when events happen. There's a ton, a ton of different hooks. They all do a lot of different things. We're not going to worry about all of the hooks that you can ever do. Um, we're just going to worry about one hook today. And we're going to worry about this. Um, hooks.once. There are two hooks method. Actually, there might be more, but I primarily use two hooks method. There's hooks.once and hooks.on. The difference between these is hooks.once is going to work exactly once whenever the hook is fired next. And hooks.on is a listener that will listen for every time that hook is fired. 
We're going to use hooks.on uh, when we do uh, modules later on so we can have listeners for buttons and things. So anytime someone does something, um, it'll actually um, do something. For now, we only want to use the hooks.once because we're printing one chat message. We only want to add it to that one chat message. We don't want this listener to be added to every chat message. Um, so the hook that we want to use today is render chat message. One thing that I will show you uh, before we uh, actually use this code is if you want a list or if you want a, um, a way to find out what, all the, what are all the hooks that are available to you, if you do config, capital config, dot debug dot hooks, if I can spell right, to true, and then you do things, like you click on something, it will tell you what hook was called, control token was called, hover token was called, etc., etc. Um, and specifically, if we run our test macro and we roll attack, you'll notice that the hook that was called was render chat message. So if we go into our uh, into our code, that's the hook we're calling, render chat message. And what are we doing with the render chat message? Well, we have a chat item, and then we have the HTML of the chat message. We're going to do an arrow function. And uh, we're going to say let weapon damage uh, equals the weapon that we had. Uh, and I think it was actually weapon uh, dot data dot data dot attributes uh, dot damage. And we're going to do the same thing we did before, where if, the, if it doesn't have a damage attribute, then we're just going to roll zero for it. Um, if it does, then we're going to actually roll uh, the value. So again, we covered this before. Same exact thing as before. And I think it's weapon. I'm just going to double check real quick. Yeah, this weapon up here that we defined. So whatever weapon it was, weapon damage is the attributes damage.value. If it doesn't exist and it's undefined, then it's zero. Then we're going to do new role weapon damage dot uh, to message. And this will actually go ahead and... Um, do the roll if it hasn't already been rolled. So normally we put the roll function here, uh, and then we do two message. But two message actually has a um, logic in there, so you don't need to do this. It will automatically roll if it hasn't been rolled. Um, and one thing we do want to give it is that speaker for the token. So alias current actor dot data dot name. And I should get rid of this and make this a dot. And this should be all of the code that we need to run this uh, run this macro. So if we copy this and we execute this macro, um, it's going to ask us. So we have this token selected. We have this token targeted to pick a weapon. We want the staff weapon. Ask for a modifier. I'm going to leave the modifier empty, but if you made this one or two or whatever. And instead of ignoring armor, um, oh, we haven't done one thing. Let's make sure we put this toggle for ignore armor in. If we go to our code. Uh, if roll dot uh, total greater than target armor, and um, oh, actually not here. Uh, we can define it here, and um, not ignore armor. And so what this is going to do is going to in this conditional check if ignore armor was checked or not. Uh, if ignore armor was checked, this is going to be false. Uh, in which case, this AND statement is going to be false, uh, in which case it's going to pick uh, the armor value to be zero. So if ignore value was ticked, the armor value is zero. If it's not ignore armor, if armor is being checked, uh, then this is true. The AND statement is going to be true, and then we're going to get the armor value here. So that should do that. Now we can, do, we can test this out. Um, let's go here. Let's save the macro. We have one token selected, one token targeted. Let's hit one. We're going to choose the attack. We're going to choose the ignore armor option. So this should mean that all of the attacks hit. Uh, if we roll attack, uh, oh, it's automatically rolling damage right now. That's not good. So let's fix that. Uh, instead of it always rolling damage, we're going to uh, actually bind this to the click on the button. So HTML.find. Um, roll damage button dot click 
uh, and then arrow function, and then we're going to put this inside of that. And what this is saying is that when the when the chat message is rendered, take the HTML of the chat message, find the ID that says roll damage. In this case, we define that to be a button. When that button is clicked, when the click handler is uh, fired off, that excuse me, then do this function. If you don't click on it, it shouldn't do anything. So now we should be ready. Um, sorry about all of these little errors. So here, I'm going to clear the chat log real quick. Use the staff, ignore armor. So it was a hit because we rolled a 19 against target armor 0. The target armor 0 because we ignored the armor. Roll damage. Voila. So we covered a lot in this macro. The code for this will be available on GitHub. If you need to go back and watch the video again to learn how you use any specific thing, I totally understand. Uh, and again, if you have any questions, please ask in the comments below, or better yet, reach out to me on Discord. Um, I'll have the link to um, the Discord, or uh, the link to the GitHub in the description box. So, thank you for watching this extremely long and extremely dense video. I really appreciate your patience and hopefully you learned something from it. Uh, I do want to give a, a shout out to the League of Extraordinary Foundry Developers. It's a second Discord to the main Foundry Discord, um, where the developers uh, like to hang out, and we have a lot of different channels where we talk about things. There's currently a package jam going on that ends at the end of this month, and so there's a bunch of categories. I've sponsored some prizes there. So if you get inspired by these videos, you want to make a module, you want to make some code for Foundry, or you want to record your own videos, um, there's categories for most liked video, there's categories for... Um, Contri uh, contributing documentation or translation to modules. Um, so if you want to do any of that, you want to check that out, I'll have a link uh, to that Discord in the description. Uh, please check that out and check out the package jam that's going on. That would be awesome. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. And I hope you have a great day.